We will continue with temperature checks, the wearing of masks, social distancing, including feeding, contact tracing. Virtual worship will continue to be an option. Our virtual service starts at 11 a.m. streaming live on Facebook. Also, you can view our services on your YouTube channel, Goodwill Baptist Church RBA. Bible study is held on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. by the conference call. That number is 1-602-610-2200. When prompted, enter the code 439450. If you are a member of Goodwill or you are a listener and friend of the ministry and you would like to give an offering, we have several methods available. You can give via Venmore at Goodwill Baptist Church. Cash app, dollar sign, M-Y-G-W-E-P. You can mail your gift to P.O. Box 25561, Richmond, Virginia, 23260. Also, if you require an alternate form to give your donations, please reach out to the trustees, James Smithers, Trustee Joan Jackson, and or Serena Cupcake Archer. If you are worshiping with us in person, you can use one of the apps provided to give your tithes and your offering. Or you can fill out our envelope and drop it in the tithes and offerings and our plate provided before and after service. Sack Sunday. Sacrifice and Commitment. Sack. Sacrifice and Commitment Sunday and in person worship drive by Sack Sunday event is being held today. Together on one accord with everyone giving 10% of what the Lord has given to them for a pay period. Example, if you get paid each week, you would like, we would like. You can, you would give unto God 10% of a week's pay. If you get paid once a month, your gift of God would be 10% of your monthly pay. Donations will be accepted by the SACs to be passed out by the trustees. Please don't leave today without seeing, seeing a trustee to get your SACs. Each Sack Sunday giver will receive a remembrance packet to highlight this special occasion when they drop off their sack. If you have any questions about Sack Sunday, please contact any member of the trustee ministry or Pastor Graham. This concludes our notices and announcements. Thank you. We will now have the reading of the church history by Sister Deborah Barber. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome home, everybody. I will be reading a brief summary of the founding of Goodwill Baptist Church. Jackson Ward joined the 1920s with no fewer than eight churches within a 10 block radius of Monroe Street. Yet our family was inspired to organize one more. Reverend William B. Ball was divinely led to establish a church that would serve the spiritual needs of working class families who lived in the neighborhood in comparison parts of Brook Avenue, Clay, Marshall, Madison, and Monroe Street. His co-founders state, no one sent us there, no church or group was backing us, but only the spontaneous efforts of the founder, Reverend B. Ball. There are several founders of record, W.B. Ball, Mr. George Randolph, 
Brother L. D. Randolph, Brother Frederick Ball, Brother James G. Jones, Sister Mary B. Jones, and Sister Alice Harris. The building located at 410 North Monroe Street was selected as the house of worship and was rented at a rate of $35 a month. The one-story plain building had been previously used as a grocery store and as a magistrate's office. Though void of prayer, the building was purchased and converted into a comfortable sanctuary and served as the home of Goodwill Baptist Church for 30 years. At 3.30 p.m. on Sunday, December 7, 1923, the first session of the Brother Wall Hall, the Independent Baptist Mission School, was held at 14 North Monroe Street. There were 19 students present who had been solicited by Brother Wall and his two daughters, Ms. Ida Zelma and Chloe Ball. In keeping with his vision, Brother Ball only solicited children who were not registered in any Sunday school. Another key figure in this mission is Amos Clark, who began the first, who became the first superintendent of Sunday school. At 8.30 p.m., the first evening worship service was delivered by the chapel. The text is Psalm 122 and 1. Brother George Nolan provided the organ music from an organ so needed by Miss Betty G. Tucker. The first morning worship service was by calendar to Sunday, December 16, 1923. Reverend Wall recorded the formal organizational date for Goodwill Baptist Church as April 1924. He recorded that the Recognition Council, moderated by Reverend K.B. Turner, and made up of sister churches, formally recognized and accepted Baptist Church into its fellowship in December of 1924. Our current building stands on the same site as the first building, and we began moving in on November 22, 1953. While this building was being erected, we held services at the studio on New Street. We give thanks for Reverend William E. Ball, Reverend Frank M. Dunn, Reverend James R. Ryan, and Reverend Arthur J. Hardy, who led us through 85 years of service to God and to the Richmond community. Today, as we celebrate our 98th annual homecoming, we continue to praise God, Pastor Bernard, and his vision for Goodwill Baptist Church as we give all praise, glory, and honor to God. Amen. Amen. Okay, next we will have a music, our musical selection for the praise, and then we will have a word from our pastor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
You say, Tilly, or some of y'all putting your head down there. I know I'm calling on y'all. Hey, Amen. No plans this day. Hey, Amen. But the centennial is coming up. And look, we it, it ain't too early to start planning for the centennial. Hey, yeah. Amen. I'm just here to tell you. We're going to do 99, but you know what the Bible says. Well, no, it's not the Bible scripture. Lord, please forgive me. You know what the song says. Hey, amen. Yeah. 99 and a half won't do. We, amen. Hey, amen. We try to make 100. Hey, amen. We're going to celebrate 99. Oh, but it ain't going to be nothing like 100. Come on, yeah. somebody. Hey, amen. Amen. I, I, I can see a banquet. Amen. 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 On 100, I can see a banquet. Amen. And y'all can have two banquets that year because um, Pastor Gardenia is that year. Come on, come back. I'm, I'm going to tell you all. Get your head right. Amen. Don't cut me short. Amen. That's right. Don't cut me short. But we're going to celebrate this 100. Amen. 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 I can see a banquet. I can see great things. I can see, oh, I can see it all. Amen. Why? Because we are already increasing the vision. Amen. By the time we get to 100, I don't know what God will. God might have us marching into a new building by 100. Come on. Come on, somebody. I don't know what God will do. By the time we get to 100, amen. We are already increasing the vision right now. Amen. We are already exploring, and look, exploring our minds and our spirits. And if you're reaching the outer limits of who we are, amen, because when we reach the outer limits of who we think we can be in God, God said, come on up a little higher. Come on, somebody. I just believe that it is. That's what increasing the vision is all about. Amen. It, it is getting on one accord with power. And whatever he wants, that's what I want. All right, y'all. I ain't going to preach. Like a, I got a chance to preach later, amen, but I, I do want to thank God for what God is doing. I do just want to reiterate Sat Sunday. Um, as y'all might notice, we are not having a specific time, a specialized time to do offering. We're not getting up. We're not passing the plate. We're not marching. Amen. But but we do want you to honor God with your giving. Amen. On normal Sundays, it's either by Venmo, Cash App, or after church or before church that you can put your offering in. Today, we're going to ask you to hold your Sack Sunday offering. Amen. Until the end of church. And those that are in person are going to come around and give their Sack Sunday offering and, and get their gift. Amen. Because we got a gift for you too. Amen. And then there will be some that will that will be driving up. Amen. Amen. And, and they'll be giving their offering. But we're going to do that after church. And if you still want to do regular tithes and offerings, because some of us feel like the sacrifice is to go above and beyond tithes and offerings. Um, um, if you still want to do your regular offering, you can drop that in too. Just mark your envelope, regular tithes and offering, and then and then put your sack offering in your sack. How many of us have sacks today? Amen. Amen. If you want a sack and don't have a sack, we got a sack for you. Amen. Here a sack, there a sack, everywhere a sack, sack. Okay. All right. <laughs> we got a sack for you. Amen. But we want you, if you desire, we want you to participate. This is what I know. And this is not to coerce you or to bribe you or to try to convince you, but this is what I know, that you can't beat God here. Amen. This is what I know. Amen. This is what I live by. And when God tell, when God speaks to me to give, sometimes God speaks to me to give to individuals. Mm -hmm. But when God speaks to me to give, I give. Because mm -hmm. I don't know where it's coming back from. Come I don't know where it's coming back from. I, I don't know what I may need in the future that God has said, okay, he put this aside just for this reason, just for such a time as this. And sometimes I forget about what I've done, and then God will remind me, I bless you because of this. And I thank God for that. I, I thank God for that obedient spirit. I teach that, and I try to live that. I want to model that because I want you to get from God everything you desire you need to. Amen. Amen. And it ain't always money. And it ain't always things. Sometimes it's just the it's just the favor of God to show up in the unexpected places yeah. where you know that it should have been the other way. Yeah. It's your child coming home with you. It's you coming up out of the hospital. Yeah. Um, it's you getting that job that you didn't think you'll be able to get at this yeah. stage of your yeah. life. It's God turning things around. It is the unmerited grace and favor of God that just yes. show up. Yes. And I thank God for being able to give. Look, God don't bless us just because we give. God bless us because we want to give. Yes. See, God desired to give. That's why he blessed us. But God so loved the world that he what? Yes. Only yes. begotten yes. son. Yes. Whosoever believes on him shall, shall, shall not perish but have everlasting life. 
God is a giver. As much as God is love, God is a giver. And we thank God for that. Come on, somebody, give God some Amen. praise today. We, we just thank God today. I have purposely, I have purposely set the service up, so I don't have to say a whole lot. Y'all don't know what it's been like doing virtual worship to do the whole service by yourself. I'm the only one y'all see. Amen. So I'm sitting back there to today, and and, and our worship leader is doing a great job. Let's give our worship leader another hand. We praise God for her. She, I, I said, hey, she said, I like me a little bit up here. She said, she said, the best. That is all right. Amen. We praise God for that. We praise God for that. Right now, we're going to get ready to have our morning prayer, and, and, and we just want to be mindful of those that are sick and shut in um, and, and, and dealing with some things, amen, and infirmities, but we know that God is able, that, that God got them, amen, God is, God is working with them and working in them. We do want to remember them. We want to remember also and give God thanks for the 98 years of service. That he has allowed us to do 98 years of ministry. We want to remember each and every one of you. We do want to specifically remember Deacon Smithers. Amen. Amen. As he recovers, he's doing well. He's doing well, y'all. Y'all will see him real soon. Amen. He is doing well. Amen. Continue to lift him up in prayer. Brother Skip, continue to pray for him. We want to continue to lift up Sister Tracy Boxley. Amen. Amen. Continue to pray for her. I believe she got a procedure coming up. And we just thank God already what God is doing and how God is moving. Miraculously, amen, amen, amen. We do want to also lift up and pray for Sister Barbara Bullock, um, um, Sister Maude Shelton, Sister Molly Bell, Sister uh, Felicia Blackwell, Sister Jeanette Stevens, amen. Continue to lift them up and pray for them, amen. We just thank God um, for all the members, amen. There might be some other requests out there, amen, that um, be, be spoken or unspoken, but we want to continue to lift you up in prayer. Um, um, pray for um, those that are traveling today, we have some members that couldn't be here today because they're traveling. Amen. Sister Lorraine and Brother Charles, they're traveling. Yeah. Amen. So we want to lift them up. Amen. Oh, yesterday today, we got to see some people. I won't call that. They don't like that name's called. But we saw some people we had not seen in a little yeah. while. Yeah. Amen. We talked to them often. We text them often. Amen. But it just ain't like seeing. It ain't nothing like seeing somebody. Yeah. And, and speaking of seeing somebody, amen, we praise God today. We got a special day. All of our visitors are special. All of our friends are special. Yeah. But we got Sister Barbara Red Sister here today. Amen. 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 And she, she is near and dear to us. Amen. We we appreciate her spirit. Her spirit yeah. still lives on in goodwill. Yeah. She was a great friend to this church. Amen. Yeah. She was a great friend to this church. She was something. I remember when she pulled me out of a, she didn't know I was in a tailspin. I was in a tailspin that night. She called me. And my mama had just passed. And, and I was just laboring with the fact, did I do enough? Did I do enough? Was I a good son? Did I do enough? And, and, and Sister Barbara called me that night and just out of the blue without much, our conversation had just started. And she said to me, Pastor Brown, you're a good son. And I'm going to tell you, that thing went all over me. That thing went all over me. That thing went all over me. And I tell you, uh, oh my God, oh my God. My wife would tell you, she was sitting right there when she said that. And, 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 that, and, that, and that option of the spirit. Amen. That she spoke the words to me. Amen. Amen. Took me up out of a tail. I was in a tailspin. I was doing pretty good until I was laboring with that thought. And I thank her for that. I never, I never forgot that. I never forgot that. I would share that story um, for the longest day I lived. Amen. She actually pulled me out that tailspin with her kind words. And she did that for a lot of people. Amen. With those kind words, soft spoken spirit. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We love her. Amen. We, amen. we still do. We honor you for being here. Thank you so amen. much. Amen. Come on, let us go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to ask Deacon Janet to come on up. Deacon Janet's going to lead us in prayer. Deacon Janet is just working just as hard as she can work. She's doing amen. intake. She's doing, she's she checking temperatures. Amen. She's reminding me to do the right thing. Amen. When it comes. <laughs> The social distance. She is our she is our Deacon Fauci. Amen. I remember him, right? Amen. But she makes sure that we're doing it the doing it the correct way, the protocol. And then she's praying for all of us. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give Deacon Jenny a hand. 
She's going to lead us to God's own place. Father God, and we love you. Father God, we couldn't do this without you. Yeah. Father God, also we pray for the names that we have called. Yeah. For the names that are here, yeah. for those that are not here. Yeah. And the shedding. Father God, I believe, Father God. Yeah. And I have a lot of faith, Father yeah. God, to know that you will heal us, Father God. Yeah. Because you are yeah. here. Father God, when we pray, yeah. Father God, all we have to do is be in patience. Yeah. Father God, because you got it. Thank you. 
You're selected. Well, ask me. Is that very honest? Has the hair be dressed? Yes. Oh, we thank God today. Amen. Thank God today. Amen. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some praise. It's going to get better. 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 Amen. I like that. I like that. God deals. Look, watch this. God deals in superlatives. Why? Because he's a superlative God. God deals in excellence. Why? Because he's an excellent God. And I don't care where you stop from. Come on, somebody today. I don't care where you stop from. You got to understand that my God is a superlative God. My God is an excellent God. My God is great. My God is merciful. And no matter where you stop from today, it's going to get better. Come on. Come on, somebody. Amen. Oh, God, we just thank you today. Thank you, yes. Taisha. Yes. Amen. Yes. Tanisha, amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. amen. Yes. amen. Thank you. Thank you for putting your, you know, you know, you know, some of, some of y'all don't understand, but when you minister, you put your heart and soul out front. Yes. You put your heart and soul out front because you can't minister in the fullness of God yes. without reaching down way deep into who yes. you are. Amen. Yes. Not only who you are, yes. amen, but even when dealing with what you're dealing with, what you're going through, amen, yes. amen, when you begin to minister, yes. amen, out of the depths, out of yes. the bowels of your yes. heart and yes. soul, yes. you got to pull up some stuff, you got to, yes. look, you got to move aside some stuff, you got to overcome some stuff, you got to step over some yes. stuff, sometimes you got to step through yes. some stuff, amen, in order to be able to minister, but can I tell you, uh, that when you minister in the fullness of God, uh, and you get a breakthrough with somebody else, uh, you done already got a breakthrough for you, come on, uh, woo, thank you Lord, God is a good God, yeah? yes he is, amen, God is amazing, amen, and what, he is truly amazing to us, we give God glory on his name, I didn't mean to jump off like that, sometimes I just do that, amen, amen, but we praise God, because God is good. Amen. He is one to to perform. Amen. And his grace and mercy endure forever and ever. And it's only by the grace of God that any of us are sick right here today. Amen. Come on, give God some praise and worship. Give God some glory. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Truly give God, God, God honor and glory. Give him the glory and honor to Jesus, the, the Son, and to the blessed Holy Ghost. Uh, to all the members of our leadership team, amen, with Deacon, uh, the trustee, amen, to all officers, um, saints, members, and friends. Come on, amen. somebody, we praise God for each and every one of you. Again, let's give God a praise for our amen. worship people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kitty, amen. Thank you for all the homecoming um, festivities, activities, and the committee that ushered those in, um, that, that, that put those things in place for us. We just thank God because we're having a great celebration, aren't we, y'all? Yeah, we're having yeah. a great celebration. We just know that, that God is in the house today. But well, how many of y'all know that there is a word from yeah, the Lord today? Is. Amen. There is a word from the Lord today. Amen. And that word is going to come to us from Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. If you can to turn there with me, I appreciate it. God appreciates it. God appreciates it. And if you find when you when you find it, go ahead and help me honor God. I stand into your feet, Isaiah, Isaiah, amen, amen, Isaiah chapter 54, amen. We're going we're gonna to read for you in your hearing from verses 14 through 17, Isaiah 54, amen, amen, amen. And the word of the Lord reads, In righteousness shalt thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear and, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall sorely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fail for thy sake. Behold, I have created to the, the smith that, will, that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Verse 17. But no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt, thou shalt condemn. 
This is the heritage uh, of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. May the Lord ever add a blessing to the reading of his word, sanctifying it in our hearts, therefore making it really good for our souls. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for you. God, we give you praise and glory and honor and worship, God. God, we thank you, God, for helping us celebrate this homecoming 2022. God, continue to make it everything that you would have it to be. Now, God, it is preaching time, and God, we pray for the type huh, of anointing that makes preaching easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes hearing your word easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes doing your word real easy. And now, God, we pray that you dip me down deep into that well of anointing. Bring me up dripping wet that I may be able to preach your word from on out. And God, as you partner with me, God, in the anointing to proclaim, to preach all this gospel, God, we ask that you partner with me in the covering of your covenant. Cover me, O oh God, with the blood, the precious blood of Jesus, that the enemy will know whose I am and who not to mess with. In Jesus' name we do pray let the household of faith say amen. 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 Today, y'all, we're going to get together in the word just for a little bit. Amen. We don't have time in the word today. Amen. Uh, um, we want to um, celebrate this homecoming 2022 with this word. And with this <coughs> word, I just want to continue in the sermon series, Increasing Your Vision. Amen. Uh, today's sermon is titled, Amen. Uh, Prepared for war. Come on, somebody say it with me. Prepared for war. Amen. Now, how many of you believe what the word of God says in First Corinthians uh, um, chapter 2, verses 9? Uh, it, it says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things uh, which God has prepared for them uh, that love him. Uh, how, many of, how many of you want uh, an increased vision in every area of, our, of your lives to come to pass? Well, uh, embracing the truth of 1 Corinthians 2, 2 and 9 uh, is a part of the mindset that we need uh, uh, to have to, to be able to accomplish uh, all that God has for us here a good will to do. Amen. I just truly believe that that's part of the mindset. Uh, and not just in this house, amen, uh, but in your house too. Amen. Uh, if God is going to bless 410, I believe uh, he's going to bless 1686 Mannequin Road. Amen. Uh, so I just want you to insert your house number. Amen. Uh, I just believe that. Uh, uh, look, uh, I want you to understand that God is going to bless you. Amen. Uh, but wait a minute, Pastor. Uh, I, thought, uh, I thought that if I believe, uh, if I trust in the Lord and believe for my vision to come to pass, uh, that's all I need to do because you said that's just a part of the mindset. Well, yes, it is. So uh, walk with me a little bit. See, see, church, I'm here to tell you today uh, that not only do you have to be ready, amen, uh, to fight for your vision, amen, uh, oh, but look, uh, you have to be prepared to go to war yeah. for your vision, yeah. amen. See, God yeah. wants to do some things. Uh, God wants to show some things, amen. Uh, oh, God wants to work some things out, amen. Uh, but you got to be prepared, amen, yeah. to go to distance uh, and go to war for your vision. Amen. The church, uh, the Lord wants us to explore and to realize all the possibilities uh, that we have in Him uh, or His will for us, His plan for us, uh, His promises for us. Uh, can I tell you, they are the stuff uh, that our visions and dreams are made of. Uh, the God given visions uh, that you have are a byproduct uh, of you being on one accord uh, with the Lord. Amen. And His desire. For you and me. But watch this church seeking to fulfill God's purpose, seeking to fulfill God's plan, increasing your vision. Can I tell you, it draws the attention of the enemy. Amen. It draws the attention of the devil himself. Amen. When you start talking about God and dragging me. And trying to live for God and uh, for God I live, for God I die. You make all those statements, don't you know uh, that the enemy's ears have perked up yeah. because he knows there's one more person he got to contend with, uh, one, one more person, one more believer he got to deal with. Uh, and this is what the Bible says in First Peter 5 and 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, uh, as 
a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. The enemy's looking for somebody to go to war. Okay. Amen. Okay. See, some of us ain't ready for what he bring. Amen. The enemy's looking for somebody to fight with. Amen. Yeah. He's looking for something to tear down. Amen. He's looking for something to step over. Amen. And some of us ain't ready for the battle. Amen. Much less ready for the war. Somebody needs to get there. Yeah. Can I tell you that the admonishment here uh, in, in that verse uh, is to let you know that this is serious, uh, that we need to be on guard uh, always, amen, that, that this enemy, the devil, uh, that will not let up uh, just because he, you might have won a battle or two, amen, uh, but he will keep coming at you, amen. Uh, the devil is a relentless enemy of your vision. Somebody need to get that. Uh, the enemy, the devil is a relentless uh, relentless enemy of your vision. Uh, the devil is at war against you and your vision. Uh, and the increasing vision is particularly bothersome to the enemy, amen. Uh, because when you got an increasing vision, amen, uh, amen, that means uh, that you are connected even more and more to the spirit of God. Yeah. It means that you are aligning with God's plan. It means that you are including more people in the vision. <clears throat> and you are trusting God even more. Mm -hmm. Look, watch this. For as the vision increases, you realize that the vision is for more than just you. Amen. Somebody yeah. need to get them. You need to realize that the vision is not just about you and a true God science vision will bear fruit even after you go. Somebody need to understand that. You get the vision to put it forth and put seed in the ground. And you ain't got to be here for the seed to come up. Come yeah. on, somebody. Yeah. That could be your legacy. Your yeah. legacy in your church. Your legacy in your children. Your legacy in your family. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the God science vision in you yeah. is meant to keep on coming up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the enemy yeah. knows this. And it is sees this, and he don't want no parts of this, so he's going to try to do everything he can to stop it. See, the enemy has features the the enemy wants to uh, wants to keep coming at you uh, um, and keep coming at you uh, and keep coming at you uh, until your vision uh, until your vision from the Lord uh, dwindles down to nothing. Uh, he want to keep nicking at you, keep fighting you uh, until you lose the vision instead of catching the vision. Uh, until your vision becomes stagnant instead of always abounding and increasing in the word of the Lord. Uh, he wants to keep fighting at you until it dwindles down to nothing. Uh, the enemy knows that without a vision the people of God, uh, they will perish. Amen. But church, uh, the enemy is waging war. Uh, oh, that's plain and simple. Uh, so what are you going to do uh, when the enemy comes after you? Amen. Uh, see, church, can I tell you, uh, it is exciting to look up on the enemy. Amen. Uh, to come out on top in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, to live more abundantly. Amen. To understand uh, that the weapons that we fight with, uh, they are not of this world. Uh, and they are not burdened with the liberty of this world, huh? but they are mighty in God. Can I tell you that exciting, amen, yes. to invoke them scriptures, amen, and see the devil get back and behave, yes. amen, yes. Uh, but you have, to, you have to know uh, yes. that there's a war going on, huh? even for your increased vision, because because every battle you fight, uh, all the enemy is doing is going back and regrouping, yes. <laughs> amen, he's regrouping, amen, he's coming back with more temples, amen, uh -huh. he's coming back with another trick, amen, He's coming back with another plan, amen, to try to catch you off guard. He wanted to catch you resting on your laws. It's all right to rest in God. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's all right to rest in God and to be at peace in God. But don't rest on your laws. Don't rest on your press clippings. Don't rest on the Old Testament yeah. back from 20 years ago. Yeah. When the enemy is coming at you with something something again. Yeah. It might not be new, it's just yeah. again. Yeah. It might not. Look, look, look. Delilah ain't had nothing new for Sam. Uh, she fixed him, probably fixed him the same way, uh, probably rubbed his forehead the same way, uh, but she just come over asking, amen. Uh, and after a while, he got tired of her asking, and he went on and told her uh, what the secret was. Uh, she didn't come up with nothing new, uh, she just did quick, amen. Uh, and you got to understand that about the enemy. Uh, he ain't got nothing new, uh, it's all the same. Uh, he's still trying to say, oh, tricks. Uh, you know what I say, tricks up for rabbits. Uh, amen to the reverend. Uh, tricks up with kids. Uh, but he got the same old, same old trick. Uh, but he consistent. He 
He walked quick. Do y'all know how, how the Grand Canyon got formed? It was water. A couple of drops of water here and there. A couple of drops of water hitting on the same spot. Then it became a runner. Running river hitting on the same spot, and over the eons, over the millions of years, you got the Grand Canyon, great and deep. And you wonder, ain't, ain't no man built that, but it was the consistency of the water. The water just get quick. I'm here to tell you, the enemy will want to be consistent in your life, coming against you. He just won't quit, but he can't cross the bloodline. Somebody need to get that. If you gonna fight, fight with the right stuff. No, don't fight with your mouth huh, only. Don't fight with your intellect only. Huh. Don't fight with your strength only. Huh. You gotta fight with the spirit of the living God. Huh. Uh, the look the enemy, huh. he might weigh more, huh, but he can't work the blood. Come on, huh. come on, somebody. Amen. Uh, the Lord is here to take the enemy consistent, huh. not just for a battle or two. Huh. See, battle uh, battles are all reduced up and, and flare ups uh, and isolated instances huh, that you gear up. For spiritually and mentally, huh? but your mind stayed on Jesus. Huh? And then you go on about your business. Huh? Once the pound is over, but can I tell you, huh? when war is being waged, understanding them, huh? it becomes more of a constant barrage of attack. Huh? All with some attacks, huh? that we will, look, we will be on the defensive. Huh? On other attacks, huh? we need to be on the offensive. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Uh, but we are never to run, huh? but we have to fight huh? and stand still huh? and see the the salvation of the Lord. See, yeah. look how many battles must be fought to win the war. I don't know. Therefore, we must be prepared for war and fight until the end. So you can be equipped for battle, y'all. Watch this. You can be equipped for battle, but are you prepared for war? Uh, what does it mean? What does one need? Amen. To enter into war, uh, unencumbered and focused uh, on the war at hand. Uh, see, some people have uh, have battle faith, amen, uh, but but not war faith, amen. Uh, see, they can deal with one or two skirmishes here, here or there, uh, uh, but the war is uh, a whole lot more involved. Uh, there's gonna be more casualties. Amen. In war, some people you started with might not make it, they might fall to the wayside. And I don't mean just be a casualty of war, but, but I mean but to be, be a casualty of this spiritual of this spiritual warfare. You know, there are some people you started out with your vision with, and they ain't here no more. Right. They ain't walking with you no more. There's a reason for that. Sometimes yep. everybody look, some people are, some people are there for a season, others are there for a reason. Yeah. Uh, you got to understand that everybody ain't gonna walk with you. Sometimes folk get tired about her. Huh? Sometimes folk get scared in battle. Huh? But what are you going to do? Huh? Yeah. See, God wants you to be prepared for war. Amen. Yeah. Huh? Can I tell you, it takes more faith huh, to wage war. So God wants you to have more faith. Huh? Amen. It takes more faith huh, to wage a war and fight a battle. Huh? Can I tell you more things that huh, have to be strengthened in you huh, if you're going to you're going to wage a war huh, that it takes to fight a battle. Huh? See, what you need is an increased faith huh, and a greater confidence in the Lord huh, if you're going to wage war. Huh? But this thing might take you away from home for a little while. Huh? This thing might happen. Might put you on enemy, ter in enemy territory yep. for a while. Amen. Mm -hmm. You might be looking crazy for a while. Nobody don't understand. See, folks that ain't fighting your war don't understand what you're going through. Yeah. Don't understand what you're dealing yeah. with. Yeah. Don't understand what you're praying as hard as you're praying. Yeah. Don't understand why you're still coming to church. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Don't understand why you're still standing on the Lord. Yeah. Don't understand yeah. why you're still believing in God's strength. Yeah. Don't understand why you're praying like that. Yeah. They don't understand. But they don't know that you in a war, amen. And when you in a war, a soldier will do whatever it takes to do all the win the battle, amen. Somebody needs to get that. See, you need that which is unfailable. You need that which is undefeatable in your life. You need that which is unwavering in your life and everlasting. You need a promise, amen, and a pat on the back. You need some assurance, and you need some insurance, amen. You need a friend. Let's think of Closer than a brother yeah. and a father yeah. who got a whole world in his hands. Yeah. And since this is what you need, I know just where to go to get it. Oh, Amen. Oh, you need yeah. to go to the word. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. So let's look at our text today. Amen. To just get what we need to prepare 
for war uh, in order to protect your vision. Uh, first thing I want to tell you, amen, uh, that you need to be established uh, on the right foundation. I'm right there in yeah. verse 14. Uh, yeah. So you gotta tell you there, there is not a good chance uh, of any structure being able to stand and withstand uh, what comes what comes against it uh, without a great uh, and firm and deep foundation. Uh, so you and I are no different uh, in our spiritual lives. Uh, you want to be prepared uh, well, for the long haul, uh, to be able to go the distance, uh, to be able to be prepared for the attacks and the many battles uh, against your vision. Uh, if you want to know uh, that you are prepared for spiritual warfare, uh, well, your foundation uh, must be God's righteousness. This is right there in the word. Uh, see, God's love, uh, God's peace, uh, and God's holiness uh, is what we should be built upon uh, to be able to withstand the attacks uh, of the enemy. Can I tell you, the devil wants to use uh, oppression, uh, fear, and terror uh, in the war against you and your vision. Uh, uh, they are designed uh, to come against you, uh, to crumble your foundation, uh, to take uh, to take you off track. Amen. Uh, then you can be more susceptible uh, to the attack of the enemy. Uh, to these attacks, these attacks uh, are, are an illusion. Illusion at first. Uh, see, that's just what fear is. The enemy always comes first with fear, and fear ain't nothing but an illusion. I heard an acronym one time for what fear is. It is false evidence of fear and real. Come on, yeah. somebody. Yeah. Uh, that's what yeah. the devil brings at you. He brings false evidence. Uh, but see, he's always going to bring a contradiction to the word of God. Uh, so he's going to try to get you to believe, uh, but not believe in what God is saying. Uh, and, and can I tell you, in the war, you focus on the attacks. Uh, and the effect of the uh, of the attacks of the enemy uh, instead of on God's protection. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, the enemy is attacked, is attacking. Uh, my foundation is God's righteousness. Uh, so therefore, in God, uh, I have my protection. Amen. Uh, see, the more you speak the negative effects of the attack, uh, the more you give the devil credit for what he's doing, uh, and the stronger the hole becomes uh, becomes until uh, until you become disobedient. Uh, if you talk negative negative alone enough. Yeah. You're going to begin to move in the negative. Amen. You're going to believe in the negative. Amen. You're going to begin to question the positive. You're going to begin to wonder if God true. You see, sometimes God will do you like Abraham. God will give you a word and then he'll be quiet. Some of us don't want God to be quiet. God, but God giving you a word and you being quiet because he's waiting on you to move to that spot so he can give you another one. See, some of us just want chat. We just want chatter from God. Yeah. You know, when I played baseball as a little boy, they taught us to chatter. To, to throw the other team off, throw back home, batter, 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 swing, batter, swing, batter, all that kind of stuff. They taught us to do that, to throw the other team off, right? Yeah. To get them thinking on one thing instead of doing what they're supposed to do. See, some of us want chatter. Yeah. Because we don't want to do what we're supposed to do. We don't want to concentrate on the Lord. Uh -huh. We don't want to lay before the Lord. Uh -huh. We don't want to seek the Lord. Yeah. We don't want to honor God with our time, our talent, and our treasure. We just want God constantly talking to us. That way we know he's near. Yeah. But I know God is near because I feel him in my spirit. Amen. Uh, but see, my spirit is his spirit. Uh, and when his spirit comes near bad, uh, my spirit begins to jump a little yeah. bit. Uh, yeah. I know he ain't got to say a word and I know he in the house. Somebody yeah. needs to get that word. He ain't got to say a word, and I got a praise. He ain't got to hook up, ain't got to drop no baseline, ain't got to kick no drums, ain't got to holler, he ain't got to say a word, and I feel it in my spirit. Come on, come on. I don't need chatter, I just need God. Well, I want you to understand that. Uh, oh, look, uh, if we look, uh, we, we're looking for something to hold on to. Why not hold on to God? Uh, but we begin to focus on what the enemy is doing uh, instead of supposing to. Instead of focusing on what God is doing, uh, and we begin to speak the contradiction to your vision, uh, instead of the affirmation of your vision, uh, or uh, the affirmation of your vision, watch this. Uh, if you get a vision that you can't line up with the word of God, you ain't got a vision, you got evil vision. Mm. Can I tell you? Mm -hmm. If you've got a vision that don't like that, that don't line up with the word of God, uh, you ain't got a vision, you got a deviation. You're going to separate some stuff and mix the stuff wrong. You're going to mess the stuff up. Your vision got to line up with the word of God. Yeah. It used to be a thing, amen, in some of the churches I grew up in. And women would pray for husbands. They didn't care if you were married already or not. That ain't, that ain't right. That ain't special. You can't pray for somebody else's husband. I ain't going to pray for somebody else's husband. That's 
some crazy in there. But see, but see, but see that that that's not a vision. That's the vision. And what I'm telling you, when your vision don't line up with the word of God, try your vision by the word. Do your vision help anybody? Do your vision line up with the word? Is, is your vision covered under a promise of God? If these things ain't happening, you ain't got a vision. Oh, but when you end up, and well, when you got a vision, amen, it'll withstand the wild of the enemy. Oh, you can get, uh, you look uh, as long as you begin to speak the word. Yeah. See, when the enemy come against your, come against your vision, if your vision ain't made out of nothing, it ain't going to stand no way. Oh, but when, you, when the enemy come against your vision, and your vision line up with the word, you can put a scripture on it. Amen. Amen. A scripture, it, it ain't a band-aid. It's a reinforcement. Somebody need to get that. It ain't a band-aid. It's a reinforcement. But when the devil come against your vision, you can speak a word. And you can speak the promises of God unto, unto you against the attack of the enemy. Because look, uh, you can't uh, you can't wield uh, and use uh, the spiritual weapons of affirmation uh, of prayer and promise uh, um, and, and, the, and the power of spiritual warfare uh, while you're walking in disobedience. Uh, and when the enemy is attacking your foundation, uh, he is trying to get you out of your level of, of obedience uh, and to walk in disobedience uh, and to walk in the con contradiction in God's word uh, because he knows that if he can get you to walk in disobedience, uh, then you ain't got no spiritual weaponry that you Right. Come on, right. somebody. Right. I'm just going to tell the truth and shame the devil yeah, today. Right. In order to be able to use that sword of the Spirit, help it himself. They should be shared, shot in the preparation of the truth. Lawrence good it about the truth. Uh, the breastplate of righteousness is the sword of the Spirit. Uh -huh. In order to be able to use them things, uh, you've got to be in relationship with God. Uh -huh. You've got to be doing what God said do. Uh -huh. And when you do what God said do, uh, God's going to make available to you all the power of heaven. When you do what God said do, uh, uh, all the power of heaven. Hey, oh, you need to get this, y'all. Uh, there is a war going on in the spiritual realm. The enemy is waging war for your mind, your body, and your soul. Uh, the enemy is desperately trying to conquer all uh, one or more of these territories uh, so he can compromise who you are, uh, uh, so he can compromise your foundation of righteousness. Uh, and what you're able to do in the kingdom, uh, uh, what you're able to have in the kingdom, uh, and who you are able to help through the kingdom of God. Uh, the enemy is trying to gain control uh, and lead us into disobedience to God uh, so that he can render us ineffective. Uh, he can render us ineffective in the giftings and the dreams and the visions uh, that the Lord has placed in you and me. Uh, uh, whether you realize it or not, uh, every one of us along with, every, along with everything that God has put in us, uh, it's valuable to the kingdom, amen, uh, the gifts we have, the dreams we have, uh, the visions we have. Uh, and if you don't know your value, the enemy does. Mm -hmm. If you don't realize your value, the enemy does. Mm -hmm. He realizes every soul that you'll be able to bring into the kingdom of God. Uh, he'll, he'll, he realizes uh, every stronghold you'll be able to tear down. Uh, and he's going to do his best to jumpstart you, wage war against you, to get you before you get started. Uh, see, God is giving you the vision. Uh, God is giving you a vision. Uh, and God wants you to increase that vision to match up with his word and will and purpose for your life. Uh, see, sometimes God can't show us everything all at once yeah. that he wants us to do. Uh, he gives us the vision and then he begins to increase the vision. Mm -hmm. But don't you always dare settle for the first thing you see. Mm -hmm. Understand that the first thing that God shows you, that's the ripple. That's mm -hmm. the beginning of the ripple. That's the pebble being dropped into the water. Mm -hmm. That's the ripple. The ripple don't stop with the pebble being dropped. Oh God, that was so good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the vision don't stop with the pebble being dropped. Because that thing expands even further. I just believe that it, it is the small beginnings. That is the seed. Yeah. It's the seed of what God yeah. wants to do in you. That is not your harvest, but it is your vision being yeah. increased every day. And then look, some people say, oh, no, you don't settle for nothing. Mm -hmm. You don't want to settle. I don't know. I don't want to settle. Yeah. Because God knew I couldn't handle what he, was, what he wanted to ultimately do in me. Mm -hmm. So he showed me the little bit first yeah. so I could get started. Yeah. I mean, it showed me the whole thing I'd be too afraid to get started. Yeah. But he showed me little by little. God said, despise not the day of the small beginning because I love yeah. to see a thing get started. Why did God know? Why did God love to see a thing get started? Because God knew the end for the beginning. Yes, he did. 
Because God knows the end from the beginning. Because God knows the end from the beginning. God knows the, the little vision that you start with ain't what's going to end up here. Come on, yeah. somebody. Somebody yeah. need to praise yeah. God right there for that. Yeah. Somebody need to praise yeah. God right there for that. Yeah. You got a vision. You got a vision. Yeah. Right over there. You got a vision. You got a vision. You got a vision. You got a vision. Yeah. We all got a vision, but it does not yet appear yeah. what it shall be. Somebody need to yeah. get that right now. It does not yet up here. Can I tell you the Lord wants us to increase our vision uh, so the expectation, our expectations uh, match his ability to impart uh, the power to do even greater exploits uh, through the gifts and the talents uh, that the Lord has given us. Amen. Uh, oh, can I tell you, uh, that's why uh, the attacks come uh, and will continue coming. Uh, the enemy is after your vision. Uh, and if the enemy can get your vision, uh, he can pervert your gifts. Uh, and if the enemy can get to your vision, uh, he can stifle your dreams. Uh, see, this has been his plan from the beginning. Uh, it worked on Adam and it worked on Eve. They were led from their foundation and led into disobedience. They stopped trusting in God's righteousness because they became disobedient and had no defense against the wiles of the enemy. But when you are established in God's righteousness and you trust in God's righteousness and allow God's righteousness to become your righteousness, oh church, when you allow God's righteousness to become your righteousness, amen. And, and look, uh, you think you begin to see who you truly are uh, uh, with God's righteousness is what we do. Uh, we are prepared to go the distance, fight the battles, and win the war. Somebody need to give God some praise uh, right there. Amen. Uh, I know I ain't going to finish all the sermon I've done. Uh, my next point uh, is when going into war uh, uh, for your vision, uh, is it good to know uh, that the Lord is with you? Uh, look at verse 15. Uh, the Bible says in Romans 8 and 31, that if God be for us, well then who, who can be against us? Amen. Can I tell you, that ought to be some good news. See, church, when we are at war, our enemy is shrewd. We expect the attack of the enemy, Satan, but sometimes we can get caught off guard by whom or even what he uses. But can I tell you today, it makes no difference to God who is doing the attacking uh, or what is attacking his child uh, that is established in his righteousness uh, established in spiritual war uh, because whoever is attacking you uh, it shall fail uh, the yeah. Bible says uh, in Psalms 27 1 and 1 through 3 the Lord is my light uh, and my salvation uh, whom shall I fear uh, the Lord is the strength of my life uh, of whom shall I be afraid uh, when the wicked even my enemies and my foes come Apply yeah. me to eat yeah. up my uh -huh. flesh. Uh, they yeah. shall stumble and fall. Uh, yeah. Though a host yeah. should encamp against yeah. me, uh, my heart yeah. shall not feel. Uh, the war shall rise. Look, no, watch that. Uh, the war shall rise around me and against me. Somebody need to know. Uh, the war shall rise uh, against me. Uh, in, 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 in this, uh, will I be confident, uh, church? Uh, I'm confident that the Lord is on my side. Uh, I'm confident that I'm prepared uh, for yeah. spiritual war. Uh, that they look uh, is coming against my vision. I'm confident in knowing that God is for me. Uh, I'm confident in knowing that God is for you. Because uh, yeah. when your vision comes to pass, uh, that means mine is on the way. Uh, yeah. I'm confident. Uh, it does not matter who uh, or what is coming against us. Amen. Uh, they shall not be able to stand uh, against the power of God in your life. Uh, you can take that to the bank. Uh, you can believe that. Uh, you need to know uh, that the attacks will come. Uh, that people will come for you. Uh, that Satan will come for you. Uh, that when people come for you, they think they're doing God a favor. Uh, sickness may come for you. Uh, but God says uh, they will gather against you, uh, but they won't gather because of me. Uh, they won't gather according to my will. Uh, they won't gather according to my word. Uh, amen. They, they'll come for you. Uh, but not by me. Huh? Yeah. And let me tell you this. Huh? Everything fails yeah. huh? outside of the will of God. Huh? I don't care what they're doing. Huh? I don't care how they're doing it. Huh? If it's outside the will of God. Huh? And see, God got a will for me. God got a will for you. Huh? And God's will God's will for me ain't going to mess up his will for you. Come on, somebody. Huh? You better get that. Huh? Some folks think that's all about me. If it ain't about me, 
lead them up nobody. But I'm here to tell you that God's will for you uh, will not mess up God's will for me. Uh, he got it covered. Uh, amen. He got it covered. Uh, he got us covered. Uh, so whosoever or whatsoever will come against you, uh, they or it will fail. Uh, why? For your sake. Because uh, you're in the righteousness of God. Uh, oh, that's what the word said. Come on, somebody. Uh, give God a praise right there. But it's a church. Uh, you got to stop your dreams and to curtail your vision of God and your expectations of God's ability in your life to promote, to protect, and to project your vision for the benefit of you at the masses. But since God bound you, you and the work and the work that He has for you to do, God will fight for you. God will fight to carry out His plan for you. So yes, God will protect you and your vision in the face of the attack of the enemy. Uh, it, is the, it is the job of a good shepherd, amen, uh, to take care of the sheep. Uh, or can I tell you, it is good. Uh, it is good to know that God, uh, that God has not only prepared you for war, uh, but that God is going to deliver you in the midst of war. Uh, this brings me to my last point. I got to get ready to go. Amen. My football team don't play you one, but some of y'all the game y'all want to see. Amen. Amen. Uh, this brings me to my last point. Uh, when you are preparing for war, uh, you need to know uh, that God has uh, got you. Uh, yeah. All in the verses 16 and 17. Uh, all church can I tell you uh, that God's got your back. Uh, yeah. God's got your front. Yeah. God's got your side. Uh, and Perfect. God's got your top. He's all over you. Uh, and he's keeping you alive. He's in the face of war. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Uh, yeah. Leave you when I tell you that God's yeah. got you. Uh, and your vision covered. Uh, I don't know uh, if I have the right words to express uh, um, don't to just how much God uh, has your back uh, when it comes to winning against the enemy, uh, the enemy of your mind, body, and your soul. Uh, Jesus understood uh, that the enemy is constantly and consistently after us, uh, after our gifts, our dreams, and our visions uh, from the Lord. Uh, Jesus told Peter in Luke, I'm sorry, yeah, Luke 22, uh, that the devil desires to sift you like wheat. Uh, but I prayed for you. Oh, somebody needs to get there. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Sometimes you ain't even gonna tell him what you want. He see what you need. Somebody needs to get there. Amen. Oh, church. Oh, you got to know that not only did somebody pray for you and had you on their mind, but Jesus is praying for you and has you on his mind. Oh, he just took a little time to say a word of prayer for you. Because in this war, the Lord has your back. Uh, although the enemy will try to throw everything at his disposal at you to stop you, to block you, to hinder you, discredit you, uh, and even destroy you, uh, what the enemy forgets uh, is that God is in control. Uh, uh, not, uh, not, not Janet Jackson. Uh, uh, God is in control uh, of all that is at his disposal. He got the whole world. Yeah, you, you get the picture. Huh? Everything in the earth is the Lord. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Uh, and then and I'm one of God's fullness, amen. I'm one of the sheep of his pasture, amen. And because I'm one of the sheep and you one of the sheep, can I tell you God's got us, amen. When God says no weapon, call oh, on. Somebody need to get there and get the shot. When God says no weapon formed against you, shall possibly, can I tell you, no means no. That anything that is your detriment, you. no weapon shall yeah. prosper, no means, no, yeah. it won't work. Every tongue that shall rise up against you, can I tell you, yeah. it shall be yeah. the damn why? Because you. no means, Thank no, you. it won't work. Come to what battle you trying to wage, the war you're trying to fight, no means, no. Yeah. So for real, y'all, the enemy's out of tricks, amen. You just keep on trying the same thing, but it's still a few people out there that keep on falling for the open door. Come on, for the banana. And the tailpipe like that of every scene. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. But just because the enemy is talking loud uh, and making some noise uh, and showing out uh, yeah. and being a, a, a nuisance, uh, oh, can I say, uh, no, still be no uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, and I stop by here to let you know today uh, that no weapon uh, formed in it, uh, and that includes your vision, uh, shall prosper. Somebody yeah. need to get that. Uh, this, is, that is more, uh, this is more than a beautiful growing piece of literature uh, um, that is so particularly beautiful uh, and poetic found in the King James Version of the Bible. Uh, can I tell you, uh, 
God's word is God's word. It is the word of God that is sharper than a two-edged sword. It is the word of God that will not be turned to him forward. It is the word of God that will, that will go on and do what he said it will do. It is the word of God that will outlast heaven and earth. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But God's word will never fail. It is the word that I say of says that this word, watch this, this word is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This word is your inheritance. It is your legacy that no weapon from the pit you shall prosper. All the soul can see but God's word, but God's word, no weapon formed against you is in your bloodline. So that you can get that. We got God's word that says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It is in your bloodline. It's like my brown eyes. It's in my bloodline. It's like your high cheekbones. It's in your bloodline. Amen. I'm going to tell you that. If you didn't determine it, it's in your bloodline. It was ordained of God to be so. So what, so what, preacher? Uh, uh, look, uh, yes, believer, uh, it is your spiritual, it is in your spiritual DNA uh, that the believer that no weapon uh, formed against you uh, shall prosper. Uh, no weapon formed against your vision uh, shall prosper. No weapon formed against your sound booth uh, shall prosper. No weapon formed yeah, against the deliverance from Lucas shall prosper. Come on, on somebody. Uh, no weapon, uh, no weapon, uh, no weapon. Uh, it was great. You, uh, so that when you go to war against the enemy, uh, you know you can fight uh, battle after battle, uh, yeah. round after round, uh, yeah. and you are prepared for war. Yeah. Church, uh, we are God's children, uh, sons and daughters of the Most High God. Uh, therefore, you have a heritage in the Lord. Uh, you have an inheritance. Uh, you have a legacy. Uh, you better count. Uh, you better trust the count. Uh, you better bank the count. Uh, you better trade the uh, up. Uh, you got it all. You got a home in glory which needs to go. Uh, and you got power on earth. Uh, you got power with me. Uh, and power in the kingdom. Uh, you got power over the enemy. You got a legacy. You got a heritage. Because no weapon. From it, get you uh, shall prosper. Come yeah, on, uh, come on, somebody. Yeah. You have a pedigree. You have a pedigree in the gospel uh, and yeah. a bloodline of faith, uh, and the blessing yeah. includes divine protection uh, of your gifts, strength, and vision in the yeah. Lord. Uh, and maybe you will have a hard time uh, yeah. grasping that concept. Uh, but understand this: uh, it is your legacy uh, to have a vision. Yeah. It is part of your heritage yeah. as a believer. Uh, that you have uh, of the covering of God uh, in your life, uh, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Uh, why? Because the God given vision in you uh, is a part of you. Uh, and if the God given if the God given vision is in you, uh, then it needs to be protected just like you need to be protected. Uh, so therefore, uh, no weapon uh, formed against your vision uh, shall prosper. Uh, Look at and look up. No weapon of uh, against you. 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 It is the heritage of faith in God. And uh, look, them folks uh, that we that were prepared for war. Uh, it is our legacy uh, when God prepared us for for war. And because God prepared us for war, he prepared Jesus the same way that he prepared us. Do you know that? We are prepared the same way Jesus was prepared. Jesus did everything that we needed to do. He did it to show us that there was no difference in him and us. Jesus came and was born. We came and was born. Jesus was tempted of all things like anybody else. And that's like we're tempted today. Jesus made it and you can't make it. Somebody needed it. Yeah. Also, yeah. watch this. Yeah. Jesus, other our example, had a whole lot of weapons formed against him and his vision. Uh -huh. But let me tell you uh, which one worked. Uh, let me help y'all for a minute. Uh, he was born in a manger, wrapped in rags. Uh, and I tell you, that was a weapon formed against him. Uh, and, but it did not prosper. Uh, Jesus was tempted of the devil uh, to work for him uh, and to obey him. Uh, it was a weapon. Uh, Formed against them, but it did not work. It did not prosper. Jesus was tempted to tempt God with 
with a twisted up scripture. Uh, it was a weapon uh, formed against yes. them, uh, but it did yes. not work. Uh, Jesus was tempted uh, to yes. serve the devil for riches and power. Uh, it was a weapon uh, formed against yes. them, uh, but it did not work. Uh, Jesus picked 12 disciples, uh, and one of them was a devil. Uh, yes. That was a weapon formed against yes. them, uh, but it did not work. Uh, they slandered Jesus' name. Uh, they yes. called him a devil and a sinner or a devil, I don't know it. Uh, those were weapons uh, formed against him, uh, but it did not work. Uh, no. Jesus was betrayed, lied on, forsaken, and left by his disciples, uh, and he was even denied three no. times, uh, yeah. all before the cock crowed twice. Uh, but there was no weapons uh, that were formed against him, uh, but it did not work. Uh, he was taken from Judgment Hall uh, to Judgment Hall. Uh, there was a weapon uh, formed against him, uh, but it did not work. Uh, he was whipped and beaten all night long. Uh, there was a weapon uh, formed against him, uh, but it did not work. Uh, to put a crown of thorns on his head. Uh, it was a weapon, uh, but it did not work. Uh, and I tell you, they pierced him in his side. Uh, it was a weapon. Uh, it did not work. Uh, they nailed him in his hands. Uh, and they nailed him in his feet. Uh, it was a weapon, uh, but it did not work. Uh, they hung him on a cruel cross uh, between two thieves. Uh, it was a weapon, uh, but it did not work. Uh, they mocked and laughed at him. Uh, they made his mama look upon him. Uh, it was a weapon, uh, but it did not work. Uh, they did everything. Uh, they called him everything but a child of God. Uh, it was a weapon, uh, but it did not work. Uh, the enemy told him, God, don't turn his back on you. Uh, but I tell you, it was a weapon, uh, but it did not work. Uh, he had to end up dying. Uh, the Bible says uh, that he gave up the ghost uh, and he hung his head uh, in the lock of his soul uh, and he died. Uh, can I tell you, uh, it was a weapon, uh, but it did not work. Uh, because on the third day, uh, after being in the grave, uh, after dealing with all the weapons, uh, after dealing with all the weapons that was on the distance, uh, after laying in the ground, uh, after laying in the ground on day one, uh, the weapon was still working. Uh, they thought, uh, on the second day, uh, they thought the weapon was working. Uh, they put a stone in front of the tomb uh, just to make sure it worked. Uh, but on the third day, uh, on the third day, uh, Don't be no coward soldier now. 
But you know, you get the full back. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get delivered. Mm-hmm. But in the Ukraine, mm-hmm. the people are outnumbered mm-hmm. bad. Mm-hmm. Russia is a superpower. Mm-hmm. And they fight Russia like they ain't nobody. Mm-hmm. They fight right. Russia right. like Russia ain't nobody. They fight right. Russia, yeah. Russia right. like a high schooler would fight a fifth grade. Come on. I ain't worried about you. Yeah. I'm going to do what I got to do. Mm-hmm. They because they understand they're fighting for their hurt. That's right. That's right. That's they're right. fighting according to their hurt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't come in here and take my stuff. Come on. That's this right. ain't your stuff. No. Right. Right. And right. look, the Russians don't know what they're fighting for. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Who know? He yeah. want power. Yeah. But the Russian people don't know what they're fighting for. Mm-hmm. So when things get rough, mm-hmm. you know what they're doing? Uh-huh. They're saying, my, my hurt is ain't in the Ukraine. I'm running back to Russia. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they leaving, look, they leaving tanks. Mm-hmm. They leaving missiles and dropping mm-hmm. guns Come on. and running. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Ain't you supposed to be outnumbering them? Ain't you supposed to know? You know what? There's no, no weapon. weapon. No on. weapon going against me. No weapon. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to think about the enemy like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. I want you to think about when the enemy come against you and you say, well, I ain't a pastor. Come on, you say, you know what I mean? You a child of God. Come on. Hallelujah. You a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you strip away the titles, yeah. it's all we all any of us does. Thank you. Right. It's all any of us does. Yeah. He didn't think of being Pastor Brown. You got a special seat down mm-hmm. because you was a pastor. Now if I've been obedient and one soul and did what I'm supposed to do, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. God may have a great place for me. Amen. Know, because we get jewels in our crown. We get elevation in the mansions of God. We get based on the work we've done for the kingdom. Right. But you know, that could be somebody out here. You uh-huh. sitting right here. Thank you. That ain't a pastor. Mm-hmm. That ain't a pastor. Mm-hmm. But you have done everything that God has told you to do mm-hmm. and done what God wants out of your life. Mm-hmm. And your mansion might be bigger than mine. Come on. I, I ain't Come hating on. on you. As long as I got one, I'm good. Amen. But I, I'm just saying. Yeah. Don't you think that because of this or that, when the enemy comes against me, no, you a child of God. Yeah. Once you once you got that mm-hmm. established, mm-hmm. you a child of God. Mm-hmm. Then in your DNA, Amen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Right. It is your heritage yeah. for the righteous. Mm. It is your right yeah. for the righteous. Amen. It is your privilege for the righteous. Yeah. It is God's yeah. grace and mercy that, yeah. that brought you yeah. into the family. Yeah. When you were yeah. sitting deep in sin, five hundred yeah. people to show, God said, "I'm gonna bring you in, stain on stains and all." Come on. God, whatever you got, I can get rid of. Mm, you better leave God uh-huh. saying, whatever you did, I can, I, I can forgive. Amen. Wherever you been, yeah. I can I can make those steps disappear. Mm. I can order your steps into a new place. Come on, come on. That is nothing. Mm. Look, your sins in your past life was a weapon for me. Yes. But once you found God, they even them said it's gonna prosper. Come on. Woo! Yeah. Somebody need to get that. I'm gonna stop you. I'm gonna make you on one thing. Amen. Stop right there. No weapon. Somebody no said with me. No weapon. No weapon. Formed against me. Formed against me. Formed against my vision. Formed against my vision. Formed against my family. Formed against the favor of God in my life. The favor of God in my life. Real prosper. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise right there. Hallelujah. We are, we are about to open up the doors of the church. We thank God for what God has brought for us today. Oh, God. I tell you. I, I, I am I am surprised myself. Because mm-hmm. some of the stuff God was doing today, I didn't I did not prepare to do. Come on. But God did. Amen. That's what I love. That's what I love. Mm-hmm. We can be a year with us. Mm-hmm. And today God did some things. God did some things to open up hearts and minds. God did some things to bring revelation and clarity yeah. to you on this journey. Yeah. What it means to fight, not just to in, in a battle here or there. But to be committed to the war, to winning the war against the enemy, to come in and look, but when he comes against you, look, sometimes, sometimes in war, you got to go seek the enemy out. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes the, those of you that have been in service, y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm. You don't just sit there and wait on the land, wait for him. Right. Sometimes you go out and look Amen. for him. You go yeah. look for you where you at. Uh-huh. Surprise, he's here. <laughs> hey, sometimes on. it's like that. Mm-hmm. that that's war. That's war. Mm-hmm. See, we can't just wage a passive war. Mm-hmm. We can't just wage a passive war. Well, I'm going to sit here and I ain't going to do much, make no noise. Maybe the enemy don't, won't know what I'm 
and, 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 and y'all don't get nothing accomplished, but I'm gonna keep it out here in Jesus' name. No! Mm-hmm. But what my father gives you means that you got to try it out. Amen. You got to see. Mm-hmm. You got to run out there a little ways. Mm-hmm. Draw some men in the fire. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's shooting at me, but it ain't gonna work. Amen. Oh, he's throwing bombs at me, but it ain't gonna work. Right. You trying to scandalize my name, but it ain't gonna work. Right. Trying to make me sick, but it ain't gonna work. Amen. Trying to discourage me, but it ain't gonna work. Nope. Ain't gonna work. Oh, Jesus, your father. Mm-hmm. And I want you, I want you to know something that there are many believers that are listening to me and are looking at me right now. Thank God for those that didn't pray. Amen. And we thank God for that. We thank God for our virtual right. audience. We thank God for those of you that shouting hallelujah all over down the road, mm-hmm. all over down the highway. We thank God. But there are some that are looking at us today that don't know Jesus like we know Jesus. And it's not something I'm saying that, that I'm saying, I, I got this, you don't know. It's saying, it's saying, if you don't know him, I want you to have him. I want you to know him. Because it's in your DNA. You got to access it. You got you to unlock some things in the kingdom. There are things in the kingdom that need to be unlocked. For those of you, um, I don't know what millennial this is. I don't know what generation we in. I, I got lost. I think I got lost out of Z. But, <laughs> But for that generation that play video games, mm-hmm. you hear me? Understand this analogy. There are, there, are, there are things in the game that everybody can see. Mm-hmm. But then there are things in the game that need to be unlocked. That need to be unlocked. And once you unlock those things, then the game is better, it's easier, more fruitful to play. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you today there are things in this world that need to be unlocked about God? Mm-hmm. You need to unlock the fact that God loves you with everlasting love. Yeah. You need to unlock the fact that God gave his only begotten son. Yeah. Who's the one believe in him? Shall not perish but have everlasting life. You need to unlock the fact that if you ask God, to, if you ask God through Jesus Christ, he can forgive you for your sins, that God will. You need to unlock some things. You need to unlock some things in this kingdom of God. But see, there are things in this world, this world will have you believe that lying and cheating and selfishness and deceit and killings and, and stealing is the only way to survive in this world. And what the world will have you believe that, that this world is the only thing, but there's an unseen world that's going on yeah, yeah. That, that, that we are living in. Mm-hmm. The Bible lets us know that we are that we are in the world, but not of the world. We understand spiritual ramifications. We understand that the spirit of God and the spiritual kingdom of God will affect this natural world in a positive way. Because we have learned to unlock some things. The grace, the favor of God. The love of God. And it all starts with the righteousness of God. And the only way we can have and unlock the righteousness of God is that we ask Jesus to forgive us for our sins. You unlock some things in the kingdom. And can I tell you, that scripture that we read earlier, that scripture ain't just to get stuff. That scripture is to be who God called you to be. First Corinthians 2 and 9, I said, I see you do something. Good. The good things that are prepared. God ain't sick of cars and money and houses. Right. Only mm-hmm. it's good to have stuff while we're here right. on this earth. But there are other things. I'm gonna tell you the most precious thing on this earth mm-hmm. is the fact that Jesus came mm-hmm. and, and, and bought our redemption <coughs> Amen. and left it here for us. Yeah. Jesus bought it, paid for it, and left it that everybody can have. He didn't take it back to heaven. It's a scripture that says, who can ascend to heaven and bring Christ down again? Who? Nobody can do that. Why would you? You couldn't. If that's what it took to be saved, that you had to make your way to heaven and get the salvation to Jesus. You know, some of us buy stuff and take it with us. Okay? I mean, like home or something. Yeah. Out of this earth. But you know what I mean. To buy stuff is yours. Ain't nobody going to get it. It's mine. I don't care if I want to use it. It's still mine. It's not out that's how some people think. But Jesus bought salvation, paid for it, and left it. And left it. And look, he bought something he didn't have to use. Ain't, ain't that well? He bought something he didn't have to use. He was already the righteousness of God. Wow. He was already the righteousness of God. That's right. He wanted to stop it. He didn't have to use it. But he bought it. Unlock that in the kingdom. When you unlock that in the kingdom, you begin to unlock eternal life in you. The greatest gift that God ever left you. Today, if there's somebody else, step in my door. 
It says, I want this promise. You know what the form is. He said, what? He said, I want to live a life where I can call on God and he gives me the answers. I can, I want to live a life where I am a son or I am a daughter to God. I want to live a life where I am an heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. I want to be saved. You want to be saved today. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Get ready to ask him to forgive you for your sins. If you want to be saved today, I encourage you to pray with me right now. It's simple. I call it a I want to be saved prayer. Some people know it is a sinner's prayer, but I call it a I want to be saved. I speak pride in God's name. And yes, we all are sinners, but we're saved by Christ. So if you're ready to be saved, please be saved. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I remember that I want to change. I recognize the things I've done. I recognize the life I've lived. But I want to change. I heard about this Jesus, the Son of God, who came to earth. He lived the perfect life. Bought my died on the cross and redeemed to redeem me from my sins. I want that gift. That gift from Jesus Christ that will save me. Jesus, save me. Save me now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 If you just prayed that prayer with me, you just ask Jesus to come into your heart and save you today for your sins. Because you ask them, he this is what I know. You say, Pastor, I don't feel no different. That's okay. There are some people that feel something different. There are some people that experience something new that they can't explain. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel a thing, know this. That as soon as you ask him, he hears. And as soon as you ask him, mm -hmm. the angels in heaven, that's the man who put a life on. Mm -hmm. As soon as you ask him, right? it, it ain't 30 years week period. You can change their mind. Oh. As soon as you ask them, the angels wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name, he said, Jesus said, no weapon is formed against him so far. The weapon of lust, the weapon of immorality, the weapon of deceit, the lies, the sin, no weapon is formed against him so far. I have just saved them according to his blood and what the Lamb are. All this in Say, it's in there. Because he has said it. No weapon won't against you so far. But this is what I want you to do for me. So do it for yourself. Pray. For yourself. Tell somebody. For God. Tell somebody. If anybody's there with you, talk. If nobody's there, call them or text them. I just got saved. I just gave Jesus my heart. I just asked him to come into my heart. And then, after that, I want you to understand this. That you need fellowship. That the righteous of God need to fellowship with each other. As we fellowship with God. God said it's, no, it's not good for anyone to be alone. But this way, churches are opening up all over the place. We're we'll opening back up. I went to the North Monroe um, Street and this was historic that same world. But go to the church of your choosing. Go to align yourself. Even if it's virtual, align yourself with the church. If you ask Jesus to come into your heart, the enemy is ready to wage war on you. And why fight? And why fight with just what you know about Jesus? You can begin to learn more about him. And Jesus has put pastors and, and teachers and deacons and, and other saints to help lead you into deeper depths about him. Help you walk through until you can stand with you and the Lord. Align yourself with a church of Bible-believing, Bible-teaching people, the saints of God. And then, do this. If you have a Bible, start reading in the book of John. And if you don't have a physical Bible, if you got a smartphone, you got a Bible. You can Google the NIV version. I would always suggest the NIV version. There's many good versions out there. I just suggest this one because it's, it's really close to the King James, but it's, 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 it's the same language. It's a little more easy to understand. Read the book of John. Start with John. And then if you're one of my deacons, suggest reading in the book of James. 
And I followed up on that. And I said, you know, that's good. I like that. So, so start reading in the book of John. You read in the book of James. And you will learn and just go about your road. Walking. Walking in this pathway called righteousness. And as you walk further along with God. Just like a baby learning to walk. Every step they take, it gets stronger and stronger. And that's what we're really doing. The right with you. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise right yeah. now. Hallelujah. Give God some praise right now. We're going to get ready to go down to this place. And um, as soon as we're off, off the air, we're going to do our sex Sunday offerings. And we're going we're gonna to have our benediction and pray over these um, um, gifts that, you, that, that will be given today in our, in our sex Sunday offering. Those of you that are, 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 are virtual, um, we have been announcing sex Sunday. Um, so you know what it is. If you've already made preparation to give your sacrificial offering, we thank you. We bless God for you. If you're one of those ones that are on their way up here to drive back, because we have a drive back portion of this also, we thank you. And this is what I know. We can't do God did it. Amen. 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 So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you first, God. We thank you for this day. God, we thank you for 98 years of homecoming, for 98 years of service. God, we, we have not always been able to gather in person. But God, we thank you, God, that we've always been able to gather one way or the other. We, we thank you for the, the blessing of virtual people, that we've been able to, to worship and see each other at least virtually, we've been able to connect through virtual. And now, God, that we're coming back together, we thank you for that, too. We thank you for all the festivities of this Sunday, of these past three weeks, and how you would you have you just emblazoned in our hearts the celebration of the goodness of God and what God has done through all the pastors and the people and the people and the members and the friends of the Good World Baptist Church for these 98 years. God, we thank you. We thank you. Now, God, we pray blessings over the offerings, God, that have been given. We pray blessings over the offerings, the tithes and offerings that have been given so faithfully by your people for these last two plus years. God, and we thank you today for sex Sunday. We thank you for the idea, for the birth, and for the, for the calling for it. Because God, upon the calling for sex Sunday, God, we put out a calling for the blessings of God to rain down richly, richly upon your people. God, we pray that every sacrifice be met by an equal or greater. I, I pray greater return, God. Not just in money only, but, but God, in spirituality, in favor, in grace, in mercy. And healing and help. Oh God, in salvation for loved ones, deliverance for loved ones. We thank you that God it be returned, that every sacrificial offering be given with a cheerful heart, knowing that God is able. God, we thank you, God. We bless your name for these offerings. We, we bless you and we bless the givers for these offerings. And now, God, as we get ready to go down from this place. God, we pray blessings upon your people, virtually and in person, that you rest from the divide with us, that you continue to walk with us henceforth and forevermore. Be the rock of our salvation, our rock in a weary land. Be our strong tower in the face of the attack of the enemy. And God, prepare us for war. We will have the victory. Go in peace. Amen. 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 Am